Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, and I sit on the Board of Trustees of the International Menopause Society. And today I'm joined by Dr. Stephen Goldstein. For our women who are joining us today, please tell us who you are. Thank you, Marla. My name is Steve Goldstein, as you said, and I'm the president of the International Menopause Society, and I'm also a professor of obstetrics and gynecology at the New York University Grossman School of Medicine uh, in New York City. Uh, what I'd like to talk to you today about is bone health, uh, what that is, and then talk a little bit about the importance and the role of muscle in bone health. So for many of our viewers, they often think about obstetricians and gynecologists in any other direction other than bone. So tell us why bone particularly and bone health and what you mean by that is so critical to midlife women and beyond. Well, in the United States, if you break your hip, you have a 21% chance of being dead within a year. Think about that. And 25% chance of not living independently again ending up in a nursing home. Now, most of my patients are very much attuned to their breast health. They go for their annual breast imaging. Uh, the five-year survival on stage one or early breast cancer is 99%, not 21% dead within a year as it is with a hip fracture. So I think that as people are living longer and longer, the importance of being as concerned about your bone health as you are about your breast health uh, is one of the things that's important to me as a gynecologist who takes care of many, many midlife women uh, who are gonna spend maybe 40 or more percent of their lives in a, in a menopausal state. And one of the things that's concerning, I think for women to understand is that if they don't have pain, they don't necessarily think something is happening with their bones or as they're getting older and a little bit more frail, they might not understand that that too will impact on the risk that they may carry for fracture. So talk to us about the global picture of bone and muscle and our balance. What does that mean? There's no question that if most people today are ordering bone density tests to look at bone mass, and patients who, let's say, have a test for cholesterol and then may go on a medication if it's too high, or blood pressure, and they go on a medication, and then they want to know what's my blood pressure, what's my cholesterol. What I see happening, at least in, in, in the United States, and I think in most developed countries, uh, is people order a bone density test. And then if the score is poor, they want to treat patients often with a medication. Um, Osteoporosis is even the term refers to bone. And I used to write uh, an update for a journal, uh, an update on osteoporosis every year. And a couple of years ago, I made them change it to update on bone health. You realize that one third of women who fracture their hip don't have osteoporosis. If you have osteoporosis, your risk is that much greater. But if you don't have osteoporosis, you're not risk-free as you pointed out. These, what we call fragility fractures, this is not from falling down a flight of stairs, this is falling from a standing height causing a fracture, uh, is, can be a devastating uh, end of life event for many women as they age. And so uh, prevention of these things is very important. Now, in addition to bone density, and I'll get to the muscle aspect in a moment, but things like non-skid rugs in the bathroom, good rubber soles to your shoes, maintaining good eyesight. If you live in an area where there might be black ice, being careful of anything that might contribute to falls, uh, having nothing between you and the bathroom in the middle of the night to trip on. These are all part of the entire picture. But what's emerging and what I wanted to bring to you now uh, is this concept of the medical term is sarcopenia. Now, I know that sounds strange. What is that? That is the inevitable wasting of muscle mass as we age, and everybody will experience this. But how much your muscles waste, some of that may be genetic, but some of that is also the effort that you put in. And so- So, so I'm gonna stop you there for a moment because I want you to focus a little bit for our, our women who are listening. You've talked a little bit about risk of reduction for fall by all of those things in the house. But what about the things that you can do 
to reduce your risk of fall because you're frail? Is there anything that can happen because of that? It's one thing to make sure you've got a clear path, but what about our bodies? So I want to make sure you don't get to be frail. Frail is the end of the line. And so tomorrow is the first day of the rest of your life. And I am actually talking to people of all ages, but specifically my midlife and menopausal women about the importance of maintaining some muscle mass, some muscle strength. Uh, you don't need to necessarily join a gym or pay for a trainer uh, in order to uh, think about what's important in maintaining some effort to maintain some muscle mass, some muscle strength, and muscle performance. Uh, you can go online, for instance. Uh, there are the, the Philips company that make light bulbs and ultrasound machines. They've got a, a thing. If you Google balance exercise, there are 14 exercises to maintain strength and balance in seniors. As little as 15 to 30 minutes a day in your home, there are some simple exercises uh, that can maintain muscle strength and muscle balance, but it begins with an awareness that this is something you want to do and need to do and need to pay attention to. You wouldn't go out of the house in the morning without putting a comb through your hair or brushing your teeth. You should think about some of this physical activity uh, as essential a part of activities of daily living as, as brushing your teeth or, or brushing your hair. Yes, yeah, certainly things that are going to strengthen our muscle mass and our muscles support our bones. So if our muscles are strong and keep us upright without an additional layer for risk for fall, that can only translate into a lower risk for fracture. Absolutely, there's good evidence. If you have this muscle wasting, this sarcopenia, and you have any degree of low bone, you know, not even osteoporosis, just this vague term of osteopenia, you know, this low bone mass, you triple your risk of falls and you quadruple your risk of fracture. So there is a lot more to bone health than simply bone density testing than simply taking calcium or vitamin D, which are important, but maintaining good balance, good muscle strength, muscle mass. Uh, and, and what that means for the individual patient will vary. Some of my patients do go to a gym, some have uh, do it by video, uh, some need some help in terms of a, a class, but you need to find something that will work for you uh, to help maintain muscle mass, muscle strength, and muscle performance, because this is just as important to your bone health as what your test would be, let's say, on a, on a bone density test. So if you're looking at, your, at yourself as a woman, is there anything that you could do that would give you the clue that you're running into trouble? Any simple tests that we can do at home? Sure. Can to you assess stand on? Up? Yes, I start by telling people, can you stand on one leg for 60 seconds without touching the wall or a chair? If you can stand on one leg for 60 seconds, both sides, for, you know, then you're, you're doing pretty well. And if you can do it with your eyes closed, don't worry about this conversation. You're way ahead of the curve. <laughs> I think also, you know, for individuals, if they struggle to get out of a chair and need to push on the arms of a chair, what does that tell us about their frailty and risk for fracture? Well, there's no question. The inability to stand from, you know, from a chair without using the arms uh, is one measure. Uh, it's also gait speed, um, you know, grip strength. I mean, there are... There are objective ways of measuring this that some doctors will employ, but this is just in its infancy. So right now, what I'm interested in is an awareness and whether over the next decade, we will develop better techniques to measure your muscle mass, your muscle strength, your muscle performance as easily as we now measure bone density. Uh, and well, that become as common, I don't know. But right now, I just want people to be aware of the importance of doing something to maintain uh, their muscle strength and their muscle mass. Well, it's so important because we think of all the things that women as our patients are proactive about, knowing their heart health, their blood pressure, their blood sugar, but somehow this messaging about the importance of bone and now muscle is often a message that we don't hear. So you've heard Dr. Goldstein, tomorrow's the first day for the rest of your life when it comes to balance, look at some balance exercises, think about your ability to really support your body and reduce your risk for falls is one of the most important things you can do to age well. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Goldstein. Thanks for having me.